how you can move to the beautiful country of Ethiopia for an extended period of time as a tourist or live here permanently and get your permanent residency card like I am. Today is October the 13th, 2020. My name is Ezra. The purpose of this video is for me to share with you my knowledge, insights, tips, and advice on how to transition from the United States of America to relocate to the beautiful country of Ethiopia. Many people ask me, how is it that you moved to Ethiopia? And they want to know, what is the necessary paperwork that I must have when I leave the United States to move to Ethiopia? How much is the cost of the plane ticket to fly to Ethiopia? What all should I pack? Once I arrive in Ethiopia, what should I expect? How much is the cost of living in Ethiopia, like the food, housing, and transportation? All of these questions and more, I will answer for you in this video. And hopefully by the time you finish this video, it'll bring you one step closer to moving to the beautiful country of Ethiopia. Now, before you move to Ethiopia, you must ask yourself, are you mentally prepared? The reason why I say this is because to leave behind your home in America to transition to another country is not always an easy task. You may endure hardships, challenges that you may face when living in Ethiopia. Living in Ethiopia is not always easy. Living in Ethiopia is not always fun and games. Therefore, you must have a thick skin and you must be mentally prepared for any challenge, any hardship or challenge that you may face. For instance, are you prepared to feel the feeling of loneliness when you leave behind your friends and family for an extended period of time? Are you prepared to feel the feeling of isolation when you cannot effectively communicate yourself to the Ethiopian citizens because there is a, a language or a communication barrier? Are you willing to feel the feeling of loneliness when there is a culture barrier and a culture gap between you and the Ethiopian people so you are not able to express your ideas and your emotions effectively to them and that they are not able to express their ideas and emotions effectively to you because of the communication and the culture gap? Therefore, you must take these kind of things in consideration. Another thing you must take in consideration is, are you prepared to break out of your comfort zone that you are used to when living in the United States? Why do I say this? Because the reality is, here in Ethiopia, and like many other African countries, we don't have always access to the basic utilities like water, power, and electricity. Sometimes there is power outages. Sometimes there is water shortages. So are you prepared to take a cold shower sometimes? Are you prepared to burn the candle when the power goes off? Are you prepared to walk to your destinations when there is no taxis available? These are the kind of questions that you must ask yourself. Now, before you leave the United States, I suggest that you do these things. I suggest that you familiarize yourself with the Ethiopian culture by becoming acquainted with Ethiopian people in your home city. If you live in a state like Georgia, Texas, California, Washington, D.C., Virginia, Minnesota, or New York City, it's more than likely that you have a large Ethiopian community near your neighborhood. If you have an opportunity, try to see if you can go to some of those, communi those Ethiopian communities, sit down at a restaurant, order a meal, get to know people, talk to Ethiopians and ask them questions about their culture. Sit down at a bar, have a beer and meet Ethiopian buddies and talk to them and get to know them personally and try to see if you can develop some kind of understanding of the Ethiopian psyche, characteristics, behaviors, and communication, ways of communicating. Because the reality is, the Ethiopian people have a different culture than we have. So they have a different way of communicating. They have a different vision on life. So all these things that you want to become acquainted with before you arrive here in Ethiopia, that way you can have an insight on what to expect when you get to Ethiopia concerning the culture of Ethiopians so there will not be such a large uh, culture shock for you when you arrive here in Ethiopia. Another thing for you to do is try to learn the basics of Amharic. Amharic is the main language which is spoken in Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa is the capital of Ethiopia. Adi Amharic is uh, kind of difficult to learn. However, with practice, you can learn it uh, effectively, especially if you've practiced it every day. So before you come to Ethiopia, try to learn the basics of Amharic, like how to say your name, how to ask other people what their name is, how to ask for directions, how to ask for help, and most importantly, how to count money and how to negotiate the prices of things. Like, how much is this? This is too expensive. The reason why is because before you get to Ethiopia, if you know the basis of Amharic, you would better be able to navigate your way around the city and negotiate the price of things like uh, food, housing, transportation. So try to learn the basis of Amharic. The best way to learn Amharic is to ask your Ethiopian buddies that you made when you go to the Ethiopian community, and most of them will be more than happy to teach you Amharic. Also, you can go to YouTube and look up YouTube videos on how to speak Amharic. Also, you can look up books on Amazon, and they have books on how to speak Amharic effectively. 
So as much as you can, try to learn Amharic as well. Now, before you come to Ethiopia, what you want to do is you want to start saving up as much money as you possibly can. When I came to Ethiopia almost six years ago, I brought with me only $5,000 and I was able to stretch that $5,000 for almost an entire year, around eight to nine months, I was able to stretch it out. And the reason how is because before I came to Ethiopia, I did my research, which I'm going to share with you as well. So try to save as much money as you possibly can. If possible, see if you can start a business in the United States, which will generate you income in the United States while you live here in Ethiopia. Because the main reason why is, if you are still able to collect United States uh, dollars, then that will benefit you more. Because living in Ethiopia is not expensive, however, you will still need some kind of generating income. So the best thing for you to do, if possible, if you don't already have, is to see if you can start some kind of business. The business doesn't have to be a big complicated business. It can be something like car washing, pressure washing, or things of that nature, or forex if you're into that kind of stuff. As long as you're able to generate a few hundred dollars at least a month, you'll be able to save money while living here in Ethiopia. So if you ever have to return back to the United States, you can go with money in your pocket and not dead broke. If you don't have any kind of business, see if you can save as much money as you possibly can. What I did before I left the United States is I stopped going out as often. I stopped spending my money on frivolous things because I knew I wanted to leave the United States and move to Ethiopia. So that's how I was, how I was able to save my money. Also, do you have some kind of benefits like VA benefits or social security benefits? That will also work before you um that'll also work for you here in Ethiopia. But be sure that if you do have benefits that you don't miss any doctor appointments while you're living here in Ethiopia because sometimes uh, you may be, get cut off from your benefits if you don't make your doctor's appointments. So take this kind of things in consideration. Now, another thing that you should take in, into consideration before leaving the United States uh, financial wise and moving to Ethiopia is make sure you go to your bank and tell your bank that you're about to leave the uh, United States and move to Ethiopia for a short period of time or a long period of time. That way, your bank did not deactivate yourself, uh, your credit card or your debit card when they see it being used here in Ethiopia. One of the main things that I had a problem with when I moved to Ethiopia almost five or six years ago is twice my debit card got turned off. The reason why is because your, when your bank sees that your debit card or your credit card is being used abroad, they will cut it off. They will assume that, that it has been stolen. And one of the worst things that can possibly happen to you is, from you is for you to be cut off from your finance while living in Ethiopia. So go into the bank, tell the bank manager, I'm about to move to Ethiopia, so please, put my card on account status, uh, account international account status, okay? So before you leave, the, your bank will put your card on international account status. That way, when you come to Ethiopia, they don't turn your card off because they know that you're here and they know that it's not been stolen because your card is now on international account status. Now, another thing that you want to do is you want to see if you can bring a cell phone with you. If you bring a cell phone, the cell phone must have a SIM card accessibility. If your cell phone does not have a SIM card, you will not be able to use it here in Ethiopia. If the price of a cell phone in the United States is too expensive or the United States uh, businesses and companies require you to sign a contract, don't worry about purchasing a cell phone in the United States. Simply wait till you get to Ethiopia and buy a cell phone here. The average cell phone price are between 120 to 150 USD dollars and Samsung is the best phone and a Tecno is the best phone to purchase. Once you purchase a phone here, you will receive a SIM card. You activate your SIM card, and then you will be set to go to use your cell phone here in Ethiopia. Now, another thing that you should think of before you leave the United States to move to Ethiopia is the price of the plane ticket. The price of the plane ticket varies to move to Ethiopia, depending on whether you are getting a one-way ticket or a round-trip ticket, and also depending on what season that you come. Take in consideration that Ethiopia has many holidays what you want to do is you want to come during a time when, when there is not an Ethiopian holiday. Basically, come to Ethiopia by purchasing your ticket during the off season. The off season means a time in which there is not an Ethiopian holiday or a big Ethiopian event happening in Ethiopia. Because at that time, people are tra traveling back and forth between Ethiopia and the price of tickets are too expensive. For instance, in January is Ethiopia's Christmas. And in September, it's Ethiopia's New Year. So do not travel at this time. Try to come during the off season, like during the rainy season, like July or August. Also, there are other off seasons as well. If you do this effectively, you can receive a very cheap price for a, a ticket here to Ethiopia. The one-way ticket to Ethiopia are usually between the uh, prices of $600 to $800 for a one-way ticket. 
a round rate ticket to Ethiopia is usually between the price of $1,100 to, uh, to $1,200. However, uh, you can get a ticket much cheaper, like I said earlier, if you can get one during the off season. So try to see if you can do that. Now, the things that you must pack before you arrive in Ethiopia are uh, things that is that you cannot find here in Ethiopia. When I came to Ethiopia, I brought a lot of stupid things that I didn't need, like toilet paper, soap, and tissue. You don't need to bring any of that stuff. You can buy that in abundance here in Ethiopia. However, the things that I suggest that you bring, especially if you want to stay here for an extended period of time, are things like electronics. <laughs> things like laptops, uh, gaming computer systems, uh, even a large screen television, uh, you know, tablets. You cannot find those kind of things here in Ethiopia. So get those in the United States because here in Ethiopia, the price of those things are too expensive and they are much more expensive than the price that you will pay for them in the United States. For instance, in the United States, the price of a laptop that's $300, a new laptop that's $300 will cost you six and $700 here in Ethiopia. The price of a TV that's no more than three or $400 in the United States will be around twelve to $1,300 here in Ethiopia. The pricing of a, a gaming system in the United States, which is only two hundred to three to four hundred, five hundred dollars, will be about one thousand to one thousand two hundred dollars here. And oftentimes, the laptops and the gaming systems are not even new, or they're old. And so, therefore, you should try to bring as many electronics that you feel that you feel like you would need here in Ethiopia. Another thing to bring to Ethiopia is a, a certain clothing. Don't worry about the shirts too much, or undergarments like undershirts or underpants uh, or underwear but you will want, want to bring over as many pairs of blue jeans as possible. Not only blue jeans, but any other color jeans as you possibly can. Because here in Ethiopia, there is not a good quality of jeans here. Jeans are not good quality here. After one to two months, the jeans here will start developing holes. Also, another thing to do is bring as many pair of um, sneakers and tennis shoes as you can, authentic ones like Nikes and Adidas. Because in Ethiopia, the price of Nikes and Adidas are very, very expensive. And usually, almost like 90% of the time, they're not even real. So make sure you bring over a good pair of Nikes, a good pair of Adidas, any kind of name brand tennis shoes that you want to bring. Because here in Ethiopia, the price is too very expensive. A pair of Nikes in the United States, which costs $25 to $50, here may cost you $100 to $50 to $200 and even $250. And oftentimes, they are not authentic. They are even fake. So make sure you bring over as many pair of tennis shoes as you can, maybe like two, at le two or three at least, okay? Because you won't be able to find Jordans here, you won't be able to find Nikes, you won't be able to find um, Adidas. So if you like those kind of pair of tennis shoes, bring them with you when you come. Now, the cost of food. The cost of food is not expensive. The cost of food depends on if you go out to eat or if you buy food from the open market and cook at home. The cost of food usually ranges between this. A kilo of tomatoes is the equivalent of one dollar. A kilo of onions is the equivalent of one dollar. A kilo of oranges is the equivalent of one dollar and thirty cents. A kilo of mangoes is the equivalent of one dollar and thirty cents. A kilo of rice is the equivalent of one dollar. Okay, therefore, you should bring uh, enough money to uh, sustain you to purchase your food here. But if you want to eat out and go to a restaurant it might cost you a little bit more. The average price of eating out every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner will range between eight to $10 on average. But if you go to expensive restaurants, it can even cost you $15 a day. But if you only uh, eat out at normal basic restaurants, you should spend no more than eight and $10 a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But that's not including the snacks, okay? So basically, the best thing for you to do is, if you have a house, which I'll talk about in a second, the best thing for you to do is go to the open market, Buy enough food for the entire week, like your vegetables and your meat, your fish and your chicken, and then that will sustain you for the entire week. If you buy food and if you buy food at the open market and cook at home, the average price of cooking and eating at the uh, home will range you around two hundred and thirty dollars a month. OK, now housing. When you come to Ethiopia, my advice to you is to live as much as you can like the locals, which means don't try to live in a very expensive hotel. Don't try to live in a very expensive townhouse. Don't try to live in a very expensive guest house because this will cost you too much money. What you want to do is, before you get here, have someone that you know, like myself, or the connections that you made in your home city with the Ethiopian community of people that you know that you can trust to find you an unfurnished apartment here in Ethiopia. If you can find an unfurnished apartment 
The prices of that of an unfurnished apartment ranges between one hundred to fifty to three hundred and fifty dollars a month. After the, afterwards, you can buy your furniture piece by piece. You can buy your bed, you can buy your couch, you can buy your living room set, and everything like that. Over time, you will have everything that you need. You could furnish your entire apartment for around three hundred to four hundred dollars a month. Uh, four hundred. Excuse me. You can furnish your entire apartment between three hundred and four hundred dollars. If you can, if you plan on being here for a longer period of time, bring a TV with you as well, okay? Otherwise, you will not find a TV here, all right? Another thing is for you to do is, um, <clears throat> you know, so these are the things, these are the advice that I give you. So, now that you have your plane ticket, now that you have everything that you need, you have all the knowledge that, that's necessary to move to Ethiopia, what to expect? Ethiopia is a very peaceful country, so don't worry about anything. Ethiopia is very peaceful, especially during the daytime and even, even at night. However, you, you still must be very careful sometimes in uh, certain areas of Ethiopia. But for the most part, you don't have anything to worry about. There may be pickpocketers, but there's not any violent activity or any violent crimes. Uh, sometimes in certain rural areas and here in um, Addis Ababa, we have had some kind of tribal uh, conflicts. However, for the most part, besides the tribal conflicts, it would, you should not have anything to worry about living in a city. Uh, everything is peaceful. So uh, you can expect to live very peacefully living here in Ethiopia. I suggest that you live in Addis Ababa until you become more familiarized with living in the rural areas. Now the paperwork that you, you must have to move to Ethiopia are the followings.